Don't you love it when you solve a problem that you didn't think was possible or was just super challenging? As 3D artists, we're often confronted with technical problems on the daily. Many of these problems get put on the back burner to tackle at a later time. Then, out of nowhere, the world stops. A possible solution consumes your thoughts. Like when you're in the shower, driving, quilting with grandma, or even busting ghosts. Completely unrelated tasks, the idea just pops right in there. I couldn't help it. It just popped in there. What just popped in there? Today, I'm gonna to share with you a solution that I thought would be super tricky, but is actually quite simple, allowing you to keep the object parametric, a problem I wanted to solve for a little while now. And that's why I'm recording this, to share with you and give back to the community. If you like this tutorial and wanna see more, give my channel a subscribe and like the video to show your support to boost the algos. It'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks, and let's dive in. So here we are in Photoshop. I just wanted to do a side note and show you how I'd normally create this texture inside of Photoshop. So what I would do is I'd set a noise up pretty high in a square document and then I would take the radial blur and blur it in a radial fashion to create that aluminum brushed circular effect. Now the problem with this is it's not parametric and it's kind of baked so I prefer to have something that's parametric that's easily updatable. That was the background behind this texture that I created and why I wanted to do it inside of Cinema 4D Redshift. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the IPR render. I've got a button up here at the top that just turns it off. You can edit by going to Redshift IPR and dragging the button into a location that makes it easier so you don't have to click the drop down. You can second just click this and it activates. Okay, so let's open up our tool panels here. This is the attribute panel and then this is the node editor. So this is what we're going to be creating. It's this group and you can see we have a couple tabs on the group that controls the loops which we'll talk about in a little bit the control noise and the ramp so you can basically retool this to use inside of your roughness channel your color channel your bump channel and so on so if we jump into the group you can see that it's actually quite simple a ramp node that plugs into a multiply node then a modulo and another ramp to give us our final output and here's that ramp that allows us to make those final adjustments. And then I've plugged them into the inputs and outputs. So let's go ahead and open up a new document and start this from scratch. Okay, so here we are back in Cinema 4D and I've created a plain object, a disc, and applied a basic white standard material, applied it to the material, made the material white, and removed the reflections. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a ramp, drag this in, and we'll drag in our texture and link it into the color channel. I'll render up the IPR and we have just a regular gradient, nothing exciting yet. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and we're gonna add a multiply node, so it's just MUL, drag it in and it should highlight and link up. And this is how many times the ramp is going to loop. So I'll put something like four or five. And what this does is this kind of does like an offset. It's just multiplying it by a number, set it back to five. And we want this to multiply five times. So what we'll do is we'll add a modulo, MOD, and this will not work by the way. So what you do is you just drag it in and you have to manually link it. And you can see the modulo is now working. We can set value here. So I can set it to something like 10. And with this ramp, um, you can see that it doesn't have a perfect spacing. You got a ramp here, like a gap here and a gap here. That has to do with the this smooth. If we set it to linear, it'll space it out evenly on the ramp. So what we wanna do is we wanna set this to uh, a circular pattern. So we'll go circular. And then the last thing we wanna do is you wanna remap this, this pattern here using a our custom defined ramp. So I'll add a ramp again. Drag it on and you can see it highlights. And then with this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this gradient to be more visible here. And I'm gonna turn off my IPR so it's not running. We're done with this for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend this ramp out so it's as wide as possible. And I'm just gonna click here a bunch of times. Select all of them by holding shift. Select the first one and then the last one. And then we can set this to step, which makes them stepped. And we can also right click in this window here and say distribute selected knots. And we can randomly position these. So I'll put one here, one here, one here. You don't have to be perfect with these. You just want to make sure that you have uh, equal spacing of the colors. Select the first one and the last one. Right click, distribute knots. And what I want to do is I want to double these up. So what I'll do is I'm just going to drag this in, go to about halfway, hold control or command. There we go. And then I'll try to select this first one here. Select the last one. 
the first one. So this looks pretty good, even spacing. And um, let's render up the IPR. So here we go. We've got some pretty good line work here. So if there's one that looks problematic like this one here, I can go back to my multiply, just bring it to one. And you can see this one here has a little bit of extra line work going on in it where it's doubled up. So I think it's this one here, one here. There we go. I'm gonna take an add a, select the first one then the last one, scale it, holding command and dragging. There we go. Now we've quadrupled our deal here just by duplicating and then right clicking and saying distribute knots. And I'm going to go back to my multiply node and bring this back up to 10. So there's the pattern. You can still see it though. It repeats. So if you look at this final ramp here, we've got the ramp. It's the original. That's how it's going to be laid out. We got the multiply, the mod, and then this final ramp is the one where we're going to go to the above the ramp here that we had just adjusted. Go to the noise and I'm just going to crank these up and you can see the noise amount randomizes you might get some flickering it randomizes the noise so i'll set the frequency to 10 and there we go pretty random this is the heart of this effect is the ramp the multiply the modulus and then remapping it to this ramp here it gives us this effect and you can change the way this goes if you want vertical lines you want diagonal radial does a starburst effect but for most cases, we'll do circular. And then this can be used in your bump channel, your specular channel, your metalness channel. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we wanna make this thing usable. So instead of seeing all these nodes and like duplicating it like this, what we can do is we can group these together and then give them some custom controls. So what I'll do is I'll select the nodes here that I want to group, right click and say group nodes. Brush metal circle. You can call it whatever you want. You can see that there's no controls here. So let's expose some of these parameters. So the obvious one is this multiply node. So I'm gonna hold down control or command on a Mac with this little dot, not the keyframe button, but the dot. It exposes this parameter. Just drag it up, say new input. We'll give this, call it loop. This one, we're not gonna change. You leave that at one. And then the next one that we wanna adjust is this noise amount to create randomness. So we can expose one of these sliders. And then when we duplicate it, we can just change this value you and it will auto update and give us a new uh, set of noise so i'm going to control click or command click on both of those properties drag it in new input new input i'll leave these names the same and then one last one that i like to add is an adjustment layer node so i'm going to do type in c and then type in ramp and i'm going to bring in this scalar ramp this will give us a curve that we can adjust and we'll call this adjustment so this is going to be our adjustment curve. And I like setting this to spline preset linear. So we're gonna just be able to adjust this. You can see it made it washed out. We can invert and so on. So I'll put it back to its default and I'm gonna expose this parameter as well. So I'll hold control or command click, go here, drag it in, new input, and there we go. We've expanded the properties that were most appropriate. So now what we do is we can come back to our group here, close these up, select it. And now you can see we have input general and general. We're gonna change these names in a second, but you can see this tag says input that's our loop control. This one's our noise control. And this is our adjustment. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to right click in this panel right here and say edit resource. And we'll go to this first one here on the bottom, which is our curve. So we'll say level adjustment. And you need unique names for these. Call this one levels. This next one is going to be the noise properties. So we'll say noise, noise control. If you put noise, it doesn't keep the name because it has to be unique. And then this one is our loop. So I'll call this looping. Now, once you hit OK and close that window, you'll notice it turned black and that's because our properties reset when you change those values they reset so we'll come in here and say 10 noise control will set to 5 and 10 and then our level adjustment you can adjust this as you see fit okay that wraps it up for this part this last and final example that i wanted to show you is in certain circumstances you might need more noise and more gradient detail and what i'm going to show you is how to stack these so i'm going to go inside here and what we're going to do is we're going to take these nodes here, duplicate them, give it a different modulo no number, number, add a color layer. This is our base. This one's layer one, and we can add one more. Give this a different name number, maybe like 20, and then drag this into the alt input. And then what we can do is we can come in here and add 
these up. So we have a we have three layers. So we have the base, this ramp, and this ramp. Set these to because we have three of them. We'll set it to 33, 33 percent. So 0.33, and this one to 0.33. And now we've got a third of each. And then this last one we can do is we can set a noise and change the scale to something small so it's really small and not hardly visible and on this third one will be our noise pattern we'll go here add it in and now we have a an overlay noise so i'll set this to overlay we don't need as much noise just bring it down and you can adjust this and you can see there's a little bit of grain that's been added and this is something that you can adjust just to your liking so now you have a lot more noise pattern stacked up you can see all the detail that's happening so here's before so you can see there's a lot not as much detail when i zoom in here you can see the bands and then there's an extra layer control over here that just sweetens it up so then we can take this input here new input loop two drag it up do another one loop three so there's our three loops when we go back here you can see under looping we've got loop one two and three and these values just duplicate it so it kind of randomizes even more then the other thing you might want to do is you want to adjust the blendings so we can come in here to the mask here add that one in add this one in and we need layer three mask in as well now it's going to come in as a mess just so you know when you start doing this you can see it just picks the word general and then there's our three masks so this one's noise two and three so let's rename these. So we'll right click in here, edit resource, and this one's our noise, noise, noise amount. This one's layer two, this is layer three. And then this one is blending. Let's see if it sticks. So for some reason, changing this tab does not work. I've been having problems with it, it not staying. If somebody has a solution to that, that'd be great. If somebody can tell me why this doesn't stay, but I'll rename it to noise blend. You can see it's there, close it, it doesn't change. So sometimes it's a little buggy. So we'll see if they can fix that. So there we go. Now we have a fully customizable brushed circular metal pattern to use in other projects. So you can come up here to assets and say convert to asset. And then once you reuse it and you drag in that new asset from your node tree, so if I bring in the one that I made, so this is there too, the same thing, but this is from the asset manager. You can see when I come in here, if I need to change one of these settings inside of this node structure, you can't get inside of it. So what you need to do is you need to go to asset and say edit asset as group next to above this convert to asset. And that'll allow you to go back inside and adjust it. So here we are in the example file. I'm using this file because it already has lighting set up to get started quickly. I've got the circle brush tool added into the standard materials color channel. And what we first need to do is you can see we don't have the metal turned up. So I'm gonna add the metal. And depending on what you're going for, these brightness values and darkness levels on the color might be a little too intense. So I'm gonna bring those up so we don't have so much dark in the color channel. So it's very subtle. I'm also gonna add a little bit of anastropy, set it to some Something like 0.5 50% and let's go ahead and duplicate this by control dragging and adding a bump okay so now we'll plug it in and you can see we've got already a great you can see we got a great result already but the bump map is way too high so because this is such an intense uh, value here on our color coming into the bump we want to reduce that value so I'm gonna put this to 0.125 I find these values need to be super super subtle so let's just kind of step it up here try 0.1 there we go so 0 0.02 for my file gives us that nice highlight so I'll leave it right there. So you can see we've got some anastropic results here happening from the bump. And keep in mind, this is the simple example that we created. This is not the stacked noise. So the results are going to not be as detailed when you go close up. So the next one, what we want to do is we want to add one more tool. So we'll control drag and we'll plug this into the roughness. You can see the roughness is varying, but it's removing it in a lot of places. So what I'm going to do is on the ramp controller, I'm going to bring it down to something like 40%. So the rough maximum amount is set to let's do 45 45 percent so now we have more variation in the material we can also come in here and add variation to the noise so if we want more noise loops and more variation we can just change these values we can also bring in more loops so we get more variation in the brushed metal so I'm gonna go to this brush tool here on the bump map and bring it to something like let's do 15 so there's more detail and then we can come up to the noise here and add more variation 
variation, more cycles. And there you go, we have a beautiful result. Now, depending on the brushed metal, you're gonna find that you need to go and put very small amounts in here. You can also go into the tools ramp control and just bring these down so they're more closer to 50% and that will help reduce the bump levels. Because remember, 50% gray is unaffected. Darker values bump down, brighter values bump up. You can set this to 0.8 and then this one 0.20 or 20% and that helps reduce it as well. Well, that just wraps it up. We covered how to loop a gradient, remap it to create a circle noise gradient. We also learned how to make Make it reusable by adding controls. We layered it up for further detail and plugged it all in. Don't forget to add the group to your nodes so you can reuse it later. Thanks for watching.